Welcome back to 12 Days in March. Over the next couple of days, I will be posting excerpts from the review series I present at the medical school. I thought these might be fun until I complete the entire video library. So, to be clear, these are brief, topic-based presentations that include NBME-style questions with a detailed analysis of what the question writers are trying to emphasize. Where appropriate, I toss in additional background information. All in all, it should be fairly painless, and hopefully you'll find some use in these presentations. And with that, let's launch our first question. Good luck! All right, so I won't bog you down, but just squeeze out the particulars. On this one here, we have a, a patient with a high T4. The bottom line is this is a hyperthyroid question. These are the conditions that can do it. Now you have the increased uptake, and you need to be aware that a TSH secreting pituitary tumor would also give an increased uptake. What was there about this one that caused you all to select Graves' disease as opposed to the adenoma? It's the proptosis. That's it. And so, so I can't overstate it. They will use proptosis as their language for Graves' disease because, quite frankly, choice E would have been suitable were it not for the proptosis. And just to bear in mind that any cause of hyperthyroidism give you lid lag, but it's actually the proptosis that makes it grave. And then, very popular, they love the derivatives. It's like, why do people have that? So they may describe a patient with graves, and you know it's graves, you know where they're going, and then it's like, oh, well, what's the player here? And the major player is, it's both the autoantibody that stimulates the receptor, but it's, it's cytokine-mediated. You have to think about Graves' disease also involves activation of the T cells. So it's the T cell activation that ultimately stimulates fibroblast to elaborate extracellular matrix. And you have to be familiar, not necessarily with the downstream effects, so much as the T cells are secreting cytokines that are causing this to happen. So fibroblasts are making the extracellular matrix is edema. The other thing is there's other tissues that actually have TSH receptors, including adipose. So the stimulation uh, with TSH there also stimulates adipose. So the ocular involvement with Graves is an uh, important derivative. Be prepared with that one. And so this bad boy here, you again, same thing, you did well. And this question here is not going away. You're going to see it on step one, two, and step three, where they're going to be using thyroglobulin levels being undetectable in that patient with uh, hyperthyroidism. So virtually every other cause of hyperthyroidism, so we said with thyroiditis, you outpouring of thyroglobulin, Graves disease, outpouring of thyroglobulin, a toxic adenoma, outpouring of thyroglobulin. So how do you get hyperthyroid without releasing thyroglobulin? And the only way to do it is this way. So it's exogenous use, and the way you know about exogenous or surreptitious use is it's the thyroglobulin. Okay, so that, that, this question is not going away. So no antibodies, no thyroglobulin, and no radioactive iodide uptake because you're taking it exogenously. So that was the other thing that can give you decreased uptake. Just to summarize this hyperthyroidism, here's your players, and the thyroid scan gets you there. Adenoma, you'll see on a thyroid scan. Graves, nothing looks like that other than that TSH secreting adenoma. Thyroiditis, no uptake. Exogenous use, no uptake. Step one, you have a hyperthyroid patient. Get a scan. They do them urgently. Step two, following the scan, you complete the workup. The toxic adenoma would be definitively diagnosed by the radioactive iodide uptake. As for Graves, you confirm that diagnosis by obtaining autoantibodies and specifically thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin. As for the conditions with decreased radioactive uptake, a thyroglobulin will distinguish between surreptitious and other causes of thyroiditis. And finally, as reviewed in our previous video, lymphocytic thyroiditis is distinguished from granulomatous thyroiditis by the presence of anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies. It all makes perfect sense. And that will do it for this installment of our review series excerpts. In these brief presentations, we will keep our eye on the prize focusing on the highest yield question-based review materials. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.